Good morning, good morning, good morning, people of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. I am so thrilled and so elated to join you today for a word from the Lord. I pray that as the word of God is taught, as the word of God is comes forth, that we all allow the word of God to do some soul searching inside of each and every one of us. That we, we become those who would not only hear the word of God, but that we will be doers of the word because that will brings God glory when we live fruitful lives. So I pray this day, it is my prayer that, that the people of God be strengthened, they be encouraged, be and 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 let and I pray that the anointing fall fresh in each and every one of your lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As we enter into worship today, I ask that you would just join along as First Lady would, would lead us and take us to the throne of grace through prayer, I, or should I say, through praise, amen, through praise. So I'm gonna ask that you would just, that you would just open up your heart as she ministered to us today, this morning. I pray that you be blessed. Let's set this atmosphere right now that the word of God will be fruitful in our lives. Let's open up our hearts and receive the Lord. But before we can receive the Lord, let's give God some glory and let's give God some praise for what the many blessings that he has poured out in each and every one of our lives. Amen.
God bless us as the first lady minister to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and as all that is in me, bless his holy name. Amen. Let us go before the throne of grace. Amen. So join me in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you have given us. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that you have poured out upon each and every one of us. Lord, forgive us for the number of times that we have taken your grace for granted. And just because you have blessed us so many times before, Lord, we have not appreciated as we ought to have appreciated the grace that you have poured out. So, Father God, search us now, Father God, from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet, Lord. If you find anything, oh Lord, that's not in line with the, your will or not in line with the, your word, Father God, that's inside of us. Lord, we give you permission, Father God, to do what you got to do, Father God. That you would cleanse us up on the inside, Father God. That people, people will see that change on the inside, spilling over to the outside. Because, Lord, you said, let your light shine that men will see your good works and glorify you. And Lord, we just want to glorify you today. We just want to magnify you today. We just want to honor you in everything we do. So, Father God, touch your, your people, Father God. Lord, there are people who are hurting. There are people, Father God, that are, that are struggling right now. My struggle may not be someone else's struggle, but we, Lord, but there are people who are struggling. Some struggles are health related, some struggles are relationship related. And, but Lord, we know that you are able to meet the needs of all of us. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as you said in your word for us to come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain help in time of trouble. So Lord, we come boldly before you, Lord. We know we have not always done right. We know we have not always lived according to your word. But Lord, we come to you asking you, Lord, first to forgive us, Lord, and to create in us a clean heart, renew a right spirit within us. But Lord, we also need you, Lord, to do some fixing, Father God. We need you to fix our hearts, Father God. Fix, regulate our minds, Father God. Lord, we need just another touch from you. Holy Spirit, fall fresh upon us today. We can live right. We can, we can walk right. We can talk right. We'll know how to treat people right. Holy Spirit, if you just have your way, that you would just, 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 just be who you are and throw your weight around. Be who you are in our lives. Lord, remember those who are hurting, those, Father God, that are in positions, Father God, that's being abused. I know you're able to send deliverance, Father God. Lord, so send deliverance right now, Father God. I pray, Father God, let this word fall on good ground. That it may produce after its kind. In the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will be glorified. That the people of God will be edified. And Lord, we give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise. Because Lord, you're so worthy. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy. We cannot express with our frail lips how worthy you are but lord we just want you to know that we love you we we honor you and we ask lord that you for a fresh anointing in jesus name we do pray i want everybody to join in with me wherever you are and say amen amen and amen Hallelujah. Amen. God is worthy. Amen. I'm going to ask that you would just turn in your Bibles with me. We're going to New Testament scripture. Ephesians chapter number five. 
That's Ephesians chapter number five. And once you have found Ephesians chapter number five, I'm going to ask that you would turn your attention to verses 25 through 27. Ephesians chapter five, verses 25 through 27. Amen. And the word of the Lord reads as follows. Husbands, love your wives. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he may present her to himself a glorious church not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that she should be holy and without blemish. Amen. Amen. Our sermon topic will be coming from that 27th verse. I would like to present to you the sermon title, Spots and Wrinkles. Spots and Wrinkles. Amen. People of God, the greatest title a person could ever ascribe to is to be called a child of God. Amen. This designation does not mean that you are without sin. Mm -hmm. This designation doesn't mean that you are perfect. But what it does mean that you have accepted Jesus the Christ as your Lord and Savior. And once you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior... You are known by other names, such as saint, Christian, beloved of God, believer, Christ follower, disciple, to name a few. But today I would like to draw your attention to a very specific title that I think sets the tone to what I believe the Lord wants us to go with today. I would like to, like to present to you that we are also known, we as believers, as the church. Now, I know that for many people, once we hear or we throw out that term, the church or church, amen, we most of the time, we think that church is rather a place, a place where there's a, a, a preacher in a pulpit and pews. And although you can consider a, a physical structure as a church, but I want you to know, people of God, we got to be careful because... The enemy has a way of trying to influence us to believe that the only place that we should ever show God the piety or show God the reverence and respect that due to his name is when we walk into a brick and mortar building. When we walk into a place that where there's a steeple and stained glass windows and pews or, or chairs or, or where, where there's choirs singing and a preacher preaching, we'll get caught up and we'll begin to believe that that's the only place that we have to show reverence and respect for God. But I'm here to tell you, people of God, that I'm not knocking those things. And I do believe that as people that we should not, as the Bible says over in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, not forsaking, forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Because I believe when we come together, as, as the Bible tells us over in the book of Psalms, that it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pleasant. It's good and pleasant when brothers dwell together in unity. I believe when we come together and we assemble ourselves together and if we're doing it in Jesus name and we're allowing the Holy Spirit to have his way among all the believers that God is pleased. I believe in that atmosphere. Miracles can happen. I believe in that atmosphere. People can be saved, set free, healed, encouraged, strengthened along life's journey when we do it right. So I believe that we should come together and, and meet. But let's not get caught up on the building where we meet as being the church. Because I want you to know, beloved, that all if you name Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you are the church. Amen. You are the church. Amen. Not the stained glass windows. Not the sound systems, organs, and keyboards, and pews. Now, that's not the church. The church is the people. 
I have told you on more than one occasion that the most that the most important things that's in the building is the people. It's the people. It's you and I, the believers in Jesus Christ. And I know people of God that the church has has sometimes taken a bad rep because maybe one or two people who name Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior are not living up to the standard or living up to the moral character that God has required for us as children. And sometimes when we don't do what we're supposed to do and the world sees us, the enemy will always have the world there to point their finger and say, I told you there's nothing to those church folks. But I want you to know, people of God, that I believe in the church. I believe in the church. I believe in the church because I know what Jesus said over in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. Jesus said as he was responding to Peter when he had his disciples together and, there was, and he asked them a simple question. Who do you say I am? Jesus talking to them. After all, they have been walking with him for almost nearly three years. And, and, and you know, it's, it's okay with other people. You know, many people have a lot of opinion about Jesus. But the only one, only opinion that really matters is from the church. It's, it's the church that opinion about the Lord that really matters. Here. What Jesus says in Matthew 16 and 18. And he says, I say unto thee, thou, thou art Peter. And upon this rock, and, and you go earlier, you'll find out that, that Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And that declaration is the rock that Jesus, Jesus is the rock that he's built the church on. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prepare, prevail against it. I want you to know people of God right there. I want to stop and I want to deal with that part of the scripture that said the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. And I want you to know that there may be some people who are really reluctant about being part of the church. I want you to know that the blessed part is when you're part of the church, no matter what you go through. And I'm going to let, I'm going to be honest with you that the enemy going to try to come and attack you. <coughs> But it does not matter because Jesus is letting us know in this scripture that hell will not prevail against us when no matter. Now, that doesn't mean that the scripture says no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. But we have to understand that, yes, weapons will be formed against us. It just won't work. It won't take us out. Amen. And when we were part of the church, you get a guarantee from the Lord himself that hell will not prevail against us. But also, I want to run back in that same scripture, and I want to quote what Jesus said. He said, I will build my church. Now, I know that we got some smart people out there, and they'll say, well, that it was actually talking about the sent one. See, that's another name for the church, but we still talking about the same one. Did Jesus talking about his sent people, you and I, those who were named Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior. And he's talking about the true church. And we have to, as people of God, we have to arm ourselves likewise. Because the great thing is, he gives us a hint. He's going to build us. That's why I told you, just because you are a Christian, just because you are part of the church, doesn't mean that you're perfect. We're striving for perfection day by day as we walk with the Lord. Amen. And I'm going to give you some some help. Amen. This morning, because I believe it that we look closely at the scripture. We'll find out that God has a perfecting plan for each and every one of us. But we got to follow God's perfecting plan. Now, let, let's go return back to Ephesians chapter five. Now, Ephesians chapter five, verses 22 through 33 is usually used to when it's in the context of marriage. You start off with verse 22 when it talk about the wife's responsibility in the marriage. And then you'll find out in verse 25, it start talking about the husband's responsibility in marriage. But what I want us to focus on today is not so much as husband and wives per se. But I want us to focus on the relationship that Christ, Jesus Christ, has with all of us, the church. You'll find out that the church in these in these verses is 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 brought up in the female gender, which means the church is the bride of Christ. So we got to understand that although we have not yet 
ascended to heaven. And although Christ has not came and took us away yet, we are still what I like to call we are in the engagement period. And people of God, for those who are familiar with well, when someone get engaged, you, it's like you're, it's equal to that person now is being taken off the market. They're no longer dating, going on dates. They're, they're focused and they're preparing for the wedding day, which means that they're done with suitors. They're done with, with, with boyfriends and girlfriends because now they are ready to be married. And people of God, we got to understand that regardless of what's going on, we are the church, which means we're the bride of Christ and we are in our engagement period. Amen. And I want us to be very careful because this is what this verse is, is telling us, that we have to be careful because we are in his engagement period, our engagement period with the Lord. So we still supposed to act as if we already have been been translated already in heaven. But we live in this world. And this world is full of all kinds of things that's trying to lure us away from Christ. Hello, somebody. We, we, we lure. But I believe that these short three verses in Ephesians chapter five, verse 25 through 27, give us some some great wisdom. Give us some 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 ammunitions against those things that will try to lure us away from the Lord. Let's go and just look deeper in here because I just want to bring up several observations for your consideration this morning. Ephesians chapter five. Let's go with verse twenty five. And the word of the Lord says husband. And since we're there, I'm going to go ahead and go down that road for those who are married, those who are husband. I, I have counseled so many couples that believe that if the wife do right, then I do. Or I should say it like this. If the wife live up to my expectation, then I don't mind doing this. Or the wife may say, if the husband live up to my expectation, then uh, then I will do this. But I got us. I got a feeling that what the Lord is telling us when he says, husband, love your wife. It has nothing to do with how she acts or how she behaves. And you probably say, well, pastor, that's kind of strong. But I want you to remember that our that our marriage supposed to be compared to the relationship that Christ had for his church, for us. The Bible said that while we were yet sinners or while we were yet sinning, Christ died for us. So when you look at it, Christ didn't wait till we got all the way right to die for us. In fact, he saw the condition that we were in and still said, I'll die for you. I'll pay your sin costs. I need you to hear that. For that husband that feel like, well, if my wife will do this, and I, then I'll do that. No, 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 no. We posted it as the scripture says, husband, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. I know somebody tuned in today said, well, pastor, I didn't come to hear that. But listen, you are liable for that. If we want that perfect marriage, if we want that marriage made in heaven, we have to do it the way God says it. Amen. Stop looking at husband and wife. I'm talking to you right now. Stop looking at what one person does. You do your part. Put the rest in God's hands. Amen. Somebody. That's some free stuff. But what I want to go to is verse 26. Talking about Christ and his church, it says in verse 26, that he may sanctify her. That word sanctify means set apart. In other words, like I told you, we are in our engagement, engagement time right now. We're getting ourselves ready for the wedding. Amen. And just like a bride that's getting ready to be married, there's things she like to do. She getting her dress ready. Amen. Somebody we're going to talk about that in a moment. She getting herself ready to be. She get making sure the invitations are sent down. She making sure that everything that she needs to have in place is ready. Because on that day, she want to make sure that she's without watch this spot or wrinkle or any blemishes. Because that's supposed to be the, the one of the most important days of her life. And the day when the Lord comes to take us home, we want to make sure that we're ready. Because listen, people of God, we can't wait till Jesus come and try to get ready. Believe me, there will be nobody say, well, hold up, Lord, let me, let me, I'm running a little late. Listen, either when he come, you're ready or you're not. And the Lord said, no man know the hour I'm going to come. And that's why every day, hello somebody, we got to make sure that we are living as if the Lord can come at any moment at any time. Because we just don't know. But let's look at verse 26. 
It says that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing. Watch, listen to how this sounds. With the washing of water by the word. Listen, people of God, no matter how we try to flip this thing, no matter what we say, I told you God has a perfecting plan for each and every one of us. It involves, number one, his spirit, the Holy Spirit. This is why we are not quench or grieve the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is our keeper. Our comforter and our guide. And here's the thing. When you know it's the spirit leading you because the spirit will not contradict the word of God. Listen, every time people of God, we're hearing the word of God. The word of God has a washing power over us. When we receive the word of God, the word of God will wash us. And I'm going to tell you what needs to be washed. Amen. We need to have our character washed. Because let's be real. We, we, it's not natural for us to love people who despitefully misuse you. It takes, the, it takes the word of God. It takes the Holy Spirit to help us to do that. When we want to retaliate, retaliate against somebody because they did us wrong. It takes, it takes the Holy Spirit. It takes the word of God for us to love those who, who despitefully misuse you. But we got to allow the word of God and God perfecting plan incorporates the word of God. I remember, I remember over in John 15 and 3. Jesus says in that third verse, he said, you are already clean. Watch this. Because of the word which I spoken to you. It's the word of God that cleanses us. It's the word of God. That's why we should not despise the word of God. That's why we got to make time, people of God, for the word of God. That's why we got to allow the word of God to be preeminence. That means first place in our lives. Because when we allow the word of God to be first place in our life, guess what? We're getting ourselves ready. Every time you obey the word of God, every time you let the word, you let the word of God guide your decisions and your actions, guess what? You are getting yourself ready to be back with Jesus. Amen, somebody. You're getting yourself ready. But I need to, I need to keep on to verse 27. 27 says, that he might present her to himself. That kind of caught me. It caught me. It caught me right there. I need you to understand. Listen to this. Christ, he said he's going to present us to himself. Do you know what that means? That means this right here. That means Christ is not only, for lack of better words, going to give us the test. He's going to give us the test. He's going to give us answer to the test. And then he's going to do what I like to call, he's going to do, he gonna, he gonna do a study section with us so he can make sure we pass the test. This is what I mean. Christ, he, because of the, the part that the Holy Spirit play, he, he guides us. And it's not an it. This is why we got to make sure that we acknowledge the Lord and his fullness. That's Father, Son and Spirit. And when we allow God to, to we allow the word of God to take place in our lives. And we understand that Jesus is the, he's working on our behalf. You see, Jesus is not just in heaven sitting on the right throne, right hand of the throne, of, right hand of the throne of power. He's still working on our behalf. He's the Bible said that he's interceding. That means he's praying on our behalf. Amen. Somebody. It says. This is the part where I want to go to. He said he present he's he's he that he might present her to himself as a glorious church, not having watch this a spot that means stain or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. I want to rest right there in that, that part of 27 verse. I want you to the things I believe the spirit led me to bring to your attention today. Is the things that causes spots and wrinkles. Now, of course, we know that on the day, a wedding day, when, when a bride is wearing her dress, she wants to be flawless. She goes through great. She get her dress tailored and altered. And she goes through all this and make sure that her dress is, is ready, good to go. Because when she come down that aisle. She want to be the center of attention. She want all and she know that all eyes is going to be on her. Can you imagine showing up and you you and you attending this wedding and the bride come down the aisle. Picture this. And as she come down the aisle, you you looking at her makeup, you looking at how her hair is done and you begin to look at her dress and you find out her dress is filled with spots and wrinkles. What an embarrassment. 
And today, people, God, I want you to know that you got some spots. I have some wrinkles. We all got spots and wrinkles. And the Lord is giving us an opportunity right now to work out those spots and wrinkles. So what when, when the, when the, what, what does it mean to have spots? That means stain. That means stain. When you think of a spot, it means stains. So look at it like this right here. What causes spots? I'm going to tell you what causes spots. The biggest thing that causes a spot is wrong associations. Hear what James chapter 1 verse 26 and 27 says. If any one of you who think of himself, think he is religious, that means discipline in the things of God. And does not bridle his tongue, Lord have mercy, but deceive his own heart, this one's religion is useless. For a pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. To visit the orphans and the widows in their trouble and to keep oneself un watch this, unspotted with the world. What give us spots? Wrong association. James 4 and 4 says it like this. You adulterous people. Don't you know, watch this, that friendship with the world means enmity. That means you will be hostile towards God. Against God. Listen, that friendship. Listen, we got to be careful of the friends that we have. Yes, we live in this world. And yes, we're going to have to enter, engage with people who may not think about God the same way we think about God, who may not even accept Christ, have yet to accept Christ. But we have to be careful of who we call friends. Because, listen, when the very definition of someone being a friend is someone that y'all have the same likes. And listen, if you, you got to be careful, if you got a friend that can easily draw you away from the things of God, be careful that person could cause you to have a spotted garment. And, and, and what I mean, that person can have you de develop spots on your character. Because when Jesus comes to us, he's looking at our character, not so much as what we got on, but he's looking at our character. The sum total of our existence, our moral as well as ethical behavior, our conduct. Jesus looking at our heart and Jesus know whether you got spots and we got to be careful people God because it's so easy to to get spots. We we, we live in a world where 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 it's, it's easy to be friendships with the world. We got to be careful. Listen, and then it says about wrinkles. What is wrinkles? Amen. We know that that people the older we get, we it's inevitable. We're going to develop wrinkles. You can do all kinds of medical procedures, but eventually the wrinkles will show. So what does the wrink, what give us wrinkles in our character? I'm going to tell you what give us wrinkles in our character. Holding on to old stuff. I need somebody to hear that. Old stuff can be old arguments, grudges. Holding on to unforgiveness. Holding on to old stuff. That's what give us wrinkles. Amen. It give us wrinkles in our character. And listen, you I can put on this robe and, and look like a preacher. I can look like a pastor. But I want you to understand that God looked beyond the robe. God is looking at the, our character. He's looking at our Christian character and he's trying to examine. And he is not trying, but he is examining where we got wrinkles or not. People, God. We're giving a chance to get a wrinkle. Listen what the Bible says. The Bible says over in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is, she is a new creature. Oh, listen to that part. All things, those things that give us all things, the things that cause us to be wrinkled. All things, those things that cause us us. Not to look as good as we could before the Lord have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen, somebody. You see, people, God, God is coming back. I should say Jesus is coming back. And listen, we need to live so that if God came back, even in the middle of this message, you ready to go. You good to go. So, people, God, I hear I, I, I encourage you today. Let the water, let the word wash us. Let the word wash us. Let, let's, let's let go of those things that, that keep us spotted before the Lord. Let's let go of those things that, that keep us wrinkled before the Lord. Because he said he's coming for a bride, a church without blemish. And people, God, we got to live so that we don't know when the Lord's going to come. Because if you want to go to that new Jerusalem, 
If you want to be part of that new heaven and that new earth, amen, as it says in Revelations, um, Reve as it says over in, in Revelations chapter 21, then you gotta, we got to be ready. We got to get, listen, the time is now to be ready, to be ready. And if you hear people, God, and you ran across this message today, and you have yet to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you're saying, I got some wrinkles. I got some spots in my life. Listen, 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 sir. Listen, ma'am. Listen, young sir. Listen, young ma'am. All of us got wrinkles and spots. The truth of the matter is we are working on it. And as the word of God washes us, as we receive the word of God and follow the word of God, it will Iron out those wrinkles and remove those spots. In other words, what, I'm, what I want to portray to you today is that God wants you just as you are. The Bible said, whoever will, let them come. Today, will you come? Will you come? Will you come to the Lord? All you have to do is accept him as your Lord. Say, what does that mean? If you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible said that you are saved. Don't overthink the process. Don't let your, you see, the devil will try to throw up your past and say, well, you've been too bad. Listen, all of us been too bad. This preacher been too bad. This pastor been too bad. The first lady been too bad. But I, I am so glad that what we consider as being too bad is nothing too hard for the Lord. Hallelujah. It's nothing too hard for the Lord. All you have to do. It's confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And, and if, you're, if you're feeling that right now, while the blood is running warm in your vein, while you have an opportunity, repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that you hung, bled, and died. And you paid the sin debt for me. And I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from raised you from the dead and I receive you as my Lord and my Savior I renounce the works of the flesh I renounce the works of the devil amen and if you prayed that simple prayer reach out to me you will say, first of all, you say, I would like to I would like to speak to you more intimately as you and, and be there for you as you as you get strengthened in the word of God, as you get strengthened on your Christian journey. And people, God, I just want to pray with us right now. So let us join hearts in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word today. Lord, we understand better how important it is for us. To be, to be presented without spot and, with wrinkle, and without wrinkles. We ask, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would touch us in those areas where spots have been developed. Those areas in our character where there are blemishes. Those areas where there are wrinkles. Maybe it's some old stuff, Lord, that we have yet to realize and to let go. Lord, we call upon your name, asking you, Lord, to help us, Father God. We want to be ready when you come, Lord Jesus. We want to be holy and acceptable unto you. We know that's, the, that's our reasonable service. But we admit that sometimes we allow the things that's occurring in our life to get spots on us, to get wrinkles on us, to get blemishes on us. So, Lord, we ask that you will create a clean heart within each and every one of us and renew a right spirit within us. We thank you, Lord. We believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, people of God. Let's be careful while we got time to receive the word of God because the word of God has washing power to get out those spots. The word of God is like an iron on a wrinkle guard. Yes, sometimes the word of God can be hot. But I'd rather feel that heat from the word than the heat from the other place. Amen, somebody. Until next time, this is Pastor Joyner 
along with First Lady John, we thank you for joining us. We bless you. We love you with the love of Jesus Christ. And then we are praying for you. And now let us look unto the Lord and be dismissed. And on the way of announcement, remember to join me. Wednesday night, 6.30. Join me for Bible study. Let us get that word to the work and wash us. Wash us, amen. Make time to wash us. Now let us look unto the Lord in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. We ask, Lord, that you would just touch these, your people. Bless their going out. Bless their coming in. I pray, Lord, that no weapon formed against them shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against them in judgment, Lord, we shall condemn. So, Lord, keep your people. We love you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. And now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may he rest, rule, and abide with us hence now and forevermore. God bless you. Go in peace.